Earlier in the day, I spoke with Prime Minister Paolo Gentiloni about his country's relations with the U.S. and the changing economic environment in Europe. I started by asking him what he was hoping for from his meeting at the White House. Well, first of all, to uh, confirm the uh, strength of our, our relation, because Italy and U.S. have very, very strong relation, and we consider this the pillar of our foreign policy. And second, I hope to have a um, common view on how the meeting that we will have in Sicily of the G7 could be helpful for the major uh, free world economies to go united in the world that we are facing. And third, I hope that we will renew the efforts both of America and Italy uh, in the Mediterranean region that for us is security, migration, and uh, fight against terrorism. Uh, acting together is very relevant for us. You are the president of the G7 hosting in Sicily, as you mentioned, and it's such a fascinating time with so many issues pending. One of the biggest is Brexit and Great Britain leaving the EU. How does that affect Italy? What does it mean to you? Well, uh, it is obviously a, a negative decision, but we respect the decision of the people. Uh, negative because it weakens in any case the European Union. Uh, Britain was uh, one of the four main uh, countries of the club. I hope we'll have a fair negotiation. And to have a fair negotiation, what is crucial is to uh, maintain EU unity. We are not in no more together in the European Union, but we remain friends and partners. Do you fear that other countries will follow the UK's lead? I don't think this is um, now the, the, the real uh, situation in Europe. Well, you can never know, but uh, we had a lot of discussion in the previous weeks on the possibility in certain countries, in the Netherlands, in Austria, of uh, prevailing of position anti-EU. But I don't think that this possibility is real. You know, we have seen this rising nationalism, yeah. not only here, obviously with uh, President Trump's election, um, but Brexit, the popularity of Marie Le Pen in, in France, uh, other places. How strong do you think this nationalism is, and do you see it in Italy? The fact that many countries are asking to uh, defend their national interest is understandable. The fact that many countries are stressing the necessity to defend their own tradition uh, their own history is the vitality of our democracies. What is negative and could be even dangerous is when nationalism become another thing, an instrument, a tool to fight your neighbor or other countries. And unfortunately, we, the Europeans, are the, the master of this kind of uh, danger because we uh, provoke two world war exactly for this reason one nation against another so there, is, there are different degrees of nationalism how concerned are you about the migrant crisis in the Mediterranean it's one of the two main issues I think in Europe now one is migration the other is growth economy jobs investments as far as migration is concerned I think that we need uh, a couple of things. One, more uh, countries available to share the burden. We can't accept the fact that geography decides that the burden is to Greece or Italy or whoever. Second, we have to strengthen our action to uh, defeat the network of smugglers and traffickers, because this is not a spontaneous movement is something organized by criminal networks. Will this 
uh, cancel the phenomenon. No, we need democracy and uh, demography and development to cancel the phenomenon. But you can reduce the flow. Over a year ago, your country allowed uh, the U.S. to fly armed drones from Sicily into Libya to go after ISIS. How would you describe the situation in Libya today and really the terrorist threat from North Africa? The forces of the Tripoli government with the support of U.S. Uh, air action uh, and with our logistic uh, support uh, has been very effective and now the risk of having a stronghold is not no more there but if you have a failed state a fragile government in this situation there is always the risk of terrorism infiltrating and terrorist threats so what we need is uh, having made some mistake in Libya we the Italians the Americans, the European, the, the French, the UK, we made some mistake. We have, we have to be honest in recognizing this. Now we have the duty, even the moral duty, to contribute to stabilize this country. Because it's not stabilizing. It's still fragile. There is a government that we support, but we have to enlarge its basis and to gather other forces around this government. It's a serious problem. It's a problem, but we can uh, still tackle the problem. As we mentioned, you are the president of the G7. Italy has always been, it seemed, open to Russia. Uh, but considering Russia's moves here in the U.S. prior to the elections, uh, maybe other European nations as well, what would it take for Russia to get to a G8? Uh, is that still a possibility? At the moment, no. Uh, but what is, I think, not only a possibility but a necessity is to uh, maintain an involvement, an open door, a dialogue with Russia. The idea of isolating Russia, this is what history shows us has always been counterproductive. Who knows, in, in the future also direct involvement. That is, it is not for the G7. Not this time around. No, not this time for sure. President Trump has said that he really wants NATO countries to step up as far as how much they're contributing to NATO. Um, 2016 data had Italy at about 20th. Uh, is this a legitimate concern, and is Italy going to step up its contribution to, to NATO? We respect the commitment that we took. We are on track gradually because our economy is uh, growing, but uh, we would like to have it well, faster growing. You can name every single military operation of NATO from the Baltic to the Balkans, and you will see an Italian strong presence. So this is something we are very proud of, uh, and it is not an alternative to uh, augment uh, military expenditure with a rate that will be uh, manageable for our economy and our growth. It's legitimate for President Trump to call for the 2% uh, GDP. Absolutely, it's, it's legitimate, and it's legitimate uh, for us to say that we took this uh, engagement and we are there, we will do it gradually. We just talked to Middle Eastern leaders who had, had just met with President Trump and they were overwhelmingly effusive about how the, the situation had changed uh, from their point of view in the Middle East. I'm wondering if there is a sense in Europe about President Trump. Is there, if you were to describe it, is it apprehension? Is it opportunity? Europe and U.S. are so strongly connected that um, the, the fact that you change uh, the president cannot change the relation between Europeans and Americans. These two are the pillars of our Western democracy. Nobody is interested to have bad relations. And I think also the U.S. administration understands uh, the importance of Europe. It is not something of the Second World War. It's something for now and for the future. What keeps you up at night? <laughs> well, 
so m many uh, many threats but you have to sleep <laughs> <laughs> mr prime minister we appreciate your time grazie thank you